Uh, we have varying soil types from uh, buckshot gravel to clay to sand over clay. It tends to ripen a little quicker on the, on the clay where the, uh, the crop's usually heavier, but on the sand over clay it might have its roots down into the clay and sometimes it takes a bit longer to go off because it's got more moisture uh, where those roots are. G'day CropSmart viewers, Julian Waite here. Um, today I've got local Mount Hope farming legend, Ashley Ness with me, and we're gonna start talking about the merits between conventional windrowing and direct heading canola for harvest. Thanks for joining us, Ash. No problem. Yeah, as a, as a long time no-till farmer uh, in, in country that had a lot of ironstone, uh, we had issues with stones in our sample. Uh, out of windrows and trash heaps. So that combined with uh, the emergence of good uh, harvesting fronts for headers, um, we decided to go down that path. So we've also had ryegrass issues where we thought we may be able to get a bit of a seed kill uh, by using uh, glyphosate and uh, direct heading. We have over the journey, uh, over the five years, uh, the first three years were uh, no no visible losses at all and we thought we had this game nailed and then the last two years we've had a wind very serious a wind event while we still had standing crop and we've had uh, a couple of reasonable losses on the last paddock or two we had left so this has made us think as to how much crop should be standing i think if you had a large program you'd really need to review how much you're left standing for more than a two or three weeks especially especially if you had uh, hilly conditions. Uh, so with the advent of the pod seal type products, we're going to trial some of those to see if they help. And we've also got the GM crops, which may have some built-in shattering advantages. So going forward, we, we should be able to manage our program uh, adequately by direct heading. The timing doesn't appear to be as uh, critical for uh, direct heading and we tend to be five to seven days later harvesting than you would be if you windrow. Uh, those, those greener plants that would normally be cut at windrowing are uh, left standing and they just take that bit longer to, to, to ripen. The, uh, the glyphosate application doesn't actually bring on the harvesting at all in our experience. Um, it, it's more for the weak and uh, Only Only a marginal effect, I think. Uh, we have varying soil types from uh, buckshot gravel to clay to sand over clay. It tends to ripen a little quicker on the, on the clay where the, uh, the crop's usually heavier, but on the sand over clay it might have its roots down into the clay and sometimes it takes a bit longer to go off because it's got more moisture uh, where those roots are. I don't think you can adequately claim any yield advantages. I think it's about what fits your program, uh, what equipment you already had or you had to purchase to either windrow or direct head. Um, and it's one of those things that it'll be an individual choice by farmers. Thanks very much, Ash, for your insights. Um, I'm sure there's a lot there for people to take away. Uh, basically, in summary, the decision between direct heading and windrowing just comes down to the individual uh, rotation and, and it's all to do with timing. Uh, for more information on this subject, please get in contact with your local CropSmart agronomist.